Missouri Falls is a 1998 open world horror mystery thriller developed by Human Entertainment. Their plot is incredibly ambitious, especially for the time that the game was made in. It's a game that I think that you should definitely play, but I understand if you haven't. It's a PS1 game, and it's an open world PS1 game. It's pretty good, but it's incredibly obtuse. It doesn't control very nicely, and it has some extremely harsh time limits on everything. The game consists of 7 days, and you need to be doing specific things during those 7 days at specific hours, or else you'll just trigger the bad ending. So it's not a great player experience, and I get that. But I think it's a story that everyone needs to know about. Because this game deals with some stuff that you don't see other games deal with, even today. So this is a video for all of you that will never play it. Because this is Missouri Falls Explained. It's late. Matthew has slept in. He walks into the store and shows off his new badge to Winona. He had completely forgotten to show it to her yesterday, with everything going on. She is very impressed and glad that he can now assist the investigation in a more official manner. Not quite knowing what to do next, Matthew drives around town and finds himself at the park. He gets a phone call letting him know that Mel is getting released from jail as his father has posted bail. He rushes there and tries to stop it, but Morgan says that there's nothing they can do. The law is the law. Mel isn't exactly grateful that his father has bailed him out, but he leaves nonetheless. Cohen is also at the station. He's struggling with Kathy's death. He thinks it should have been him getting mauled. She was young, he is old, and he's going to have to live with the fact that had he showed up maybe a few moments before he did, when he found her, she might have lived. Matthew tries to reassure him that it wasn't his fault and that he couldn't have known and probably couldn't have done anything, but Cohen is unreceptive towards Matthew's reassurances. Samuels calls Matthew and lets him know that he ran a chemical test on the drugs he found. At the hospital, he lets him and Morgan know that it's Epoch, a powerful hallucinogenic. Apparently, both Kathy and Emma were into this stuff, and taking it feels like you're getting touched by a holy power. If you have a good trip, that is. If it's a bad trip, then it feels like being trapped in a room with the devil. Matthew wants Morgan to arrest Mel since the drugs are his, but he says they can't do that, they don't have enough evidence, and if Matthew wants to see Mel behind bars, he must find the evidence to connect the drugs to Mel. Matthew meets up with Winona and tells her about Epoch. She asks if he thinks that Emma was addicted to it, and he says that he doesn't think so. He says that they must believe in the Emma they knew, but Matthew says that Epoch has something to do with why she disappeared and that Mill is involved somehow. At the diner, Lorraine tells Matthew that while she believes him, she just doesn't think that this is something that Mill got into until recently but that it would explain why he was suddenly in need of a large amount of untraceable cash. Being at a dead end, Matthew figures that he should go ask James, since he obviously knows about drugs even though he says he doesn't. While he doesn't provide any drug-related insights, he does ask the question, where did Mill get the drugs from? And could the drug suppliers Mill got the drug from, which he owed money, have taken Emma as collateral maybe? While at the hospital, Matthew heads upstairs and checks in on Barbara, since she was very close to Emma, and to give her her cigarettes, which he promised her some time ago. Liz is also there, which makes sense because she is Barbara's granddaughter, and they're each other's only family. Barbara raised Liz after her parents died in a mysterious car crash many years ago, something that Barbara doesn't want to talk about. But Liz wants to talk about it even less. Andrew walks out of the room and says that she's heading to the cemetery. Liz's parents' death keeps coming up in Matthew's investigation over and over again. So he follows her and asks her about it. She says it's only been 10 years, which doesn't sound like the thing Barbara is upset about, as she keeps referring to a thing happening when she was a kid. Liz clarifies that the car crash that Barbara is still upset about wasn't a car crash at all. It was a murder. 
and the victim was Barbara's sister. She was apparently killed as part of a ritual sacrifice. A town local named Cougar tried to use Barbara's sister as a guinea pig to perform a death journey ritual like the legends of old. Seeing the parallels between that case and the current one, Matthew pressures Barbara to tell him more and she relents. Cougar was a weird man that lived at the church and helped out Father Burton. Everyone thought that there was something off about him. And one day he kidnapped Barbara's sister and performed the death journey ritual and killed her in the process. But before the authorities could catch him and question him about the house and why, he killed himself. Barbara was very upset back then. She felt robbed of closure and understandably so. Downstairs, Matthew asks James if he thinks Emma was interested in that case. And he says that he doesn't know, but that he's sure that if she heard about it, she would have taken an interest. James says that the ritualistic killings have been going on for 400 years, and if Matthew wants to know more, he should show up at the bar tonight. The bar doesn't open for another few hours, so Matthew stops by the diner to get a bite to eat, but just as he's about to enter, Mel's robbery accomplice walks out, and Matthew tries to ask him about where Mel is, but he runs off. Matthew chases after and corners the guy, and they get into a fight. Just like last time, Matthew beats him up and forces him to tell him where Mel is. He says he doesn't know, just that Mel told him to give Lorraine a note. A note that says, meet me by the room at the lakeside. Since the lake is next to the church and Matthew has plenty of time before he needs to be at the bar, he swings by the church on his way to the motel at the lake to ask some questions. Father Burton says that Cougar was the devil and that Matthew should stay on the righteous path and other gibberish in what has become traditional Father Burton style. As Matthew heads out of the church, the nun standing by the door asks for a donation and Matthew gives her a little cash and then asks if she knows anything about either of the ritualistic killing cases. She says that she does, she was here. Cougar, like we learned earlier, lived in the basement and he killed Barbara's sister by the big tree in Barrow's forest. The basement is where Father Burton found the necklace that he gave to Kathy and the big tree in Barrow's forest, that was where Cohen found Kathy. That cannot be a coincidence. Heading down the mountain again, Matthew figures that the room by the lake is the motel room that Mel has rented previously. And when he knocks on the door to that room, Lorraine is there and she says that Mel isn't here. Matthew knows she's lying though. And then he sees Mel run off and get on his bike. Matthew gets in his car and chases after him. He catches up to him and he rams his bike off the road and Mel takes a tumble. Later at the station, Mel confesses that he was working with a dealer named Bonehead, the bold guy that we've seen on several occasions, and he says that Kathy was the one that wanted drugs, but that she was too scared to buy them for herself, so she got Mel to do it for her, and to do their deals, they would meet up in that room that she rented on the 23rd. Kathy was gonna meet with someone on the 24th. Mel doesn't know who, as Kathy told him that his present wasn't required and that he wasn't invited to the festival. Mel doesn't know where Bonehead lives. He always contacted him, not the other way around. Mel also lets it slip that Bonehead is Isabella's driver and that Kathy learned about Epoch from Isabella and where to get it. Matthew heads to the bar and asks about Isabella, but Wolf says that she's not here and asks if Matthew is the guy that's been creeping around her apartment. He acknowledges that he is and asks about her driver. Wolf confirms that Bonehead is the driver, but warns him to stay away. Bonehead is bad news. Matthew then notices that Morgan is here too, and Morgan says that he's not gonna throw him out. He figures that Matthew isn't here to drink, but here to gather clues. He's not wrong now, is he? Matthew exits the bar and heads back to town. Isabella is either not at her apartment or she doesn't want to answer the door. Nas comes out into the hallway to see what the noise is all about. He mentions to Matthew that the building has air ducts, but that he shouldn't crawl into them which he definitely doesn't do and uses to gain access to Isabella's apartment. 
Inside, he finds a picture of a cabin in the woods, and as he makes his exit, he runs into the stalker that's been harassing Isabella. The stalker runs off, and Matthew chases after, and he catches up to them and asks them what the hell they're doing. They say they just wanted to know where she is because she's missing. They also mention that aside from the bar and the apartment, the only place they've ever seen Isabella is once at the junkyard. And with no better leads, Matthew hits there next. After searching the site for a while, he enters a derelict bus and finds it not only to be covered in blood, but also containing a massive stash of epoch. He reports it to Morgan and the town's police force shows up in full force to investigate. Morgan doesn't think Isabella is the one dealing epoch, and he finds it curious that epoch is stashed in a junkyard that just so happens to be owned by Dennis, so he sends his deputies to bring him in. It's been a long day, and Matthew heads back home to get some rest. <laughs> 